So here it is. Alien Interferences proposes a new interpretation of the phenomenon based on a classification of the alien interferences in five levels. Level 1. Surgical operations on the abducted person. Level 2. Alien memories implanted into the brain of the abducted person. Level 3. Cloning of the abducted person. Level 4. Attempt to move the light dots matrix the consciousness of the abducted person and constrain it into an alien body. Level 5. Different kinds of an incorporeal aliens made up by light called Lux are coming from an another dimension called Grinch or Six Fingers or Horus Ra are the ones who control all the other aliens. A level 6, 2, has been discovered and partially understood, but this is still subject of research at the present time. The true nature of man if differentiating body the physical component mind, spirit, and soul the conscious components. I actually realized that, while studying the aliens, I made a serious methodological mistake. It is not possible to study the aliens without knowing before and how we ourselves are made. Pretty soon I understood that the aliens were looking in us for something that they didn't have, something which we didn't know we had, something that makes many men an integral part of consciousness. Also admits that there are many alien races who are like us in their search for divine spiritual truths and who are also misled via many corrupted religious beliefs which ultimately can be traced back to the same satanic archontic parasitic game plan. There are some aliens who are more spiritually attuned just like there are some humans who are more enlightened than the average mass consciousness. It is not a black and white picture, but there are some basic truths which are being kept secret from the masses. The most guarded secrets behind the aliens, New World Order agenda, and the parasitic Archontic game plan revolves around the combination of satanic psychic vampirism and high technology. This high technology has also been referred to as black meta technology because it combines elements of ritual black magic nanotechnology, mind control, genetic manipulation, and alien implant technology. Truly a soul-oppressing combination and, in my view, a great threat to humanity. Unless, of course, we wake up and start taking responsibility for our own freedom. Somebody aliens and the creators of the aliens under the motto Divide Det Impera has broke the consciousness into three parts. The mind more similar to the conscious mind. The spirit to the subconscious mind. The soul more similar to the unconscious mind. Two in the case of the abductees. These three consciousnesses do not know each other do not talk to each other and often they don't even know who they are and why they are here. Essentially, there is a soul disconnect with unrecovered abduct easel. This can be understood as a type of dissociation from disconnected aspects of themselves. This disconnect is facilitated by various salient technologies such as implants, alien parasites, mind control programming, and trauma. This disconnect facilitates the aliens' usage of their soul energy, much like how our outer main has been pilfered by attaching various hoses and pipes to divert the flow from the water main. Three in case of the abductees, most of the time the soul consciousness believes it is a slave of the aliens, looks upon them as gods and is afraid of them. The cure for the abduction phenomena is to get the soul to remember who she it is a sovereign entity upon which aliens 
have no right. The body must be cleaned up of parasites and implants. Soul, mind and spirit have to know each other and they have to unify into one single and sovereign in consciousness. This process was noted to bring unexpected coherence into the psyche of the persona. In one of Marit's experiences with her five-year-old son, they both remember being placed in an enclosed machine with deep red lights and pulsating sound. Her son remembered long needles being inserted into him. She believes this pulsating sound and light instrument had to do with cloning in some fashion and recognized similarities in her and her son's experiences. 1995, one of Ted's abduction memories involved a small black box that was used to transfer his astral body consciousness from his original body into a cloned version of himself. Marit told me that one of the reasons they use the black box is so that the human spirit consciousness does not disperse and go elsewhere and instead is trapped and directed into clone bodies or stored until transferred to where the aliens want to place the astral body consciousness. Marit believes this black box technology is also key to the alien soul recycling technology which entraps human souls to be born into bodies chosen for that person. I corresponded with Dorica Manu, colleague of Dr. Cor Otto Malanga regarding the Horus Ryantity. She said, in Italy we use this notation because the Ryantity operates in a trans-dimensional body that looks like a very tall bird-like body, similar to the Egyptian god Horus. This bird-like body is not a cyborg, but it seems to be the body of a decayed human eyed race from Orion. So, the trans-dimensional form is Horus, the dark entity within his Ra. It is in actuality nothing more than a black shadow or dot quote. According to Dr. Malanga, rise at our Kennedy coming from another universe a universe sarchetopoly situated behind our universe. There is dark out there, no physical bodies, no light, no love, no souls. This Ryanity places implants on the tailbone, below the sacrum, from where he hangs onto the abductee's body, parasiting the persona and performing a perverse type of mind control. Ra may come and go to his liking. Could this dark universe that is archetypally behind ours be what the ancient Gnostics described as the outer darkness? The mention of the shadow beings beneath the various forms reminded me of a statement made by one of my former Milib female interviewees named Lilu. She stated that it is the shadows who are behind the reptilians and other colluding parasite aliens and that these beings are the ones we need to be concerned with. Marit told me that this black dot shadow is a different kind of energy within the energy body. A presence. She also said that most reptilians and draconians are in line and united with that shadow energy. Marit explains, I am able to recognize the raw energy everywhere and maintain my inner coherence. So in my opinion, the raw level of universal existence is the level of the so-called Varchans, not the minor reptilians, Gris or Draconians. Rise the level which eats the conscious awareness, and we have to bypass it in order to merge into higher realms of existence. The more important thing to focus on is not the origin of Rhine its different forms, but to see the patterns of behavior this Ra has. It truly enslaves. Like seen in cult activity, Ra enjoys the essence of the egotistical uplift, 
Marit emphatically stated, the purpose of the Horus Rhinergy Force is not only to consume humans and other species as well their inner core, but also destroy the purity of it. It wants people to forget the ultimate reality and connection to God. In every way this is true. And it goes with other races as well. Most of them are as lost as humans. Some are awakened like some humans are, too. That is why these New Age movements are so dangerous, they are a straight portal for these darker forces to manifest. They make people to compete who are the most spiritually gifted, most knowledgeable, who have more healing ascetic powers, etc., and make the whole scam revolve around human ego which becomes the source for the ego of the evil itself. So it's no coincidence, Jesus said. Do not worship pictures of dolls of God and one must leave the material behind in order to follow the route to God. The God is within. So that's why there is so much ritual performances within the NWO network. The secret difficult energy makes the evil stronger, gives these people feeling of specialty and power. It corrupts the purity. I find that our tendency is to become distracted by the entertainment aspect of ufology, rather than the spiritual mental evolutionary implications of what befalls us with this alien interference. We love to dance in the distractions, but this diverts our own awareness regarding the power of our innate divinity. I believe the ancient Gnostics were well aware of this archontic control over humanity. Akka the hypostases of the archons or reality of the rulers, Yifower tractate in the Nag Hammadi library the Gnostics, in their wisdom they tell of what the signature of the archons is, envy. This was the key human failing that makes us more vulnerable to their intrusion. But they did not leave us without hope for our solution. If we take on the protection of the light and rid ourselves of jealousy, then we enter the bridal chamber. Could the humans involved with the satanic new world order be hosted by the same black shadow Horus Rhinergy? Is this what the Archontic influence truly is and what the ancient Gnostics warned us about? The Archontic mode of parasitism reminds me of certain themes in a popular science fiction television series known as Stargate Test G1. The good are a more Evelyn trace of beings represented by ancient Egyptian falcon and jackal-headed gods. When one is taken over by the good, they receive a snake-like symbiote inserted into their spinal column, and from then on, they are hosts for the good's dark gods. Did the writers of such sci-fi EV shows know something about what is really going on within the deep dark elements of the Illuminati, NWO, and their ancient Egyptian alien gods? It made me wonder. Abductees and Milobs did not make this up. We may never know the exact answers we want regarding the true agenda of the interfering extraterrestrials. All we know is that people are consistently reporting abductions, various kinds of visitations and interference on many levels. It is clear that some humans on this planet are colluding with certain species of aliens to press and experiment with humanity. We may think that the physical aspects of abductions are of the only real importance, but if we truly can grasp the reality of quantum physics, the nature of our own consciousness and potential realization of divinity, so much more is at stake. We cannot deny the importance of our own spirituality 
and the freedom of our souls. See you soon on the next episode.